In the following presentation, we will discuss the principles on which propulsion works. We begin by considering a rocket, moving forward with velocity v rocket, and ejecting fuel backwards with velocity v prime fuel. Here, v prime fuel is the relative speed with which the fuel is being ejected. We will need the absolute velocity of the fuel with which it moves with respect to a ground observer. So let us see how much it is. The fuel participates in two motions, one forward due to the rocket and one backwards due to the ejection. So its velocity can be written as the sum of the two velocities, that of the rocket forward and that of the fuel being ejected. Now, the motion is along a straight line, and so we can write this expression in algebraic form. For that, we will choose a positive x-axis along the direction of the rocket moving. And so we can write for the velocity of the fuel that is equal to the, to the magnitude of the velocity of the rocket minus the, the relative speed with which the fuel is being ejected. As the rocket moves forward, its mass is rapidly decreasing. In a small interval dt, we will denote that change as dm. Then the amount of fuel ejected in the same interval is dm fuel and is equal to the missing mass from the rocket, minus dm. We'll highlight this expression and the expression for the velocities as we will need them later. Now, let us look at what happens with the momentum of the rocket. At time t, the momentum is equal to the product of the mass and the velocity of the rocket, or simply mv. A little bit later, at t plus dt, the momentum at that time will be equal to the product of the mass and the velocity of the rocket, plus the momentum of any fuel that was initially inside the rocket, but now it has already been ejected, dm fuel times v fuel. We will write for the momentum of the system that is going to be equal to m plus dm times v plus dv for the rocket term, n minus dm times v minus v prime fuel for the fuel term. Here I have dropped the subscript for the velocity of the rocket, and any time when I refer to the velocity of the rocket, it will be only v. The change in the momentum during the short interval dt, then, will be equal to the momentum at time t plus dt, minus the momentum at time t. Opening the parenthesis, we get the following terms. mv, mdv, dmv, dmdv, minus dmv, plus dmv prime fuel, minus mv. The mv terms cancel out, and so do dmv terms. So for the, for the change of the momentum, we get the following. mdv plus dmdv plus dmv prime. In the limit of infinitely small time interval dt, we can actually neglect the middle term dm dv as it is the product of two infinitely small quantities. So finally, the change in the momentum during the interval dt can be written as m dv plus dm v prime fuel. We'll highlight this expression so we can actually write down Newton's second law. The net external force must be equal to the rate at which the momentum changes over time. Or using the highlighted expression, that will be equal to m dv dt plus dm dt times v prime fuel. Here the first term is our usual ma, and the second term is actually usually moved on the left-hand side, on the side of the forces, and defined as thrust minus dm dt times v prime fuel. Here a reminder that dm dt is actually the rate at which the mass of the rocket changes, while v prime fuel is the relative speed or how fast the fuel is being ejected relative to the rocket. So now we can write the rocket equation as the net external force plus the thrust must be equal to the mass times the acceleration. And here's how it looks in vector notation.